Yeah, we'll record it because, man, some of these conversations are pretty inspiring. Uh, I did like your message. You seem to have some clarity about uh, I'm getting, gaining a sense of collaborative development from you. You're saying you want to help others grow. Yeah. No, at first, I think, because I'm going to be honest, I don't really know a lot about everything. Um, but I know, like, when I first heard about it, um, I was definitely thinking more about Just a question. You don't know anything about what the program or just in life? You don't know nothing like me. Yeah, in life. Uh, <laughs> yeah, in life. Uh, so, so like, <laughs> when I was like, when I was like, um, when I was first like reading about things and like really catching my attention, like my first thoughts were like just about me. Like, you know, like I really want this for myself. And then I realized there are so many other people who might even feel the same way and, you know, not have or know of the resources that are out there, like this apprenticeship. And then, you know, that gets even bigger. And then you have the ability to help everyone or the people who want help are, you know, who have the same goals or aspirations as you do. You kind of, you know, it's a win-win for everyone involved. But yeah, so that's really why I applied. But um, tell me, tell me, yeah. that, tell me that distinction there. So you're thinking that, okay, so you're applying for this, but do you see that a lot of people would like to have the kind of skills that are offered, or that you're going to learn things and then you will be able to help others more? I kind of think both. I think people. I think people would like both. I feel like there are people maybe on like both side of it, mm. you know, um, of the spectrum. But um, yeah. I feel like, you know, for me now, I would, j just for me, I'd like to go through it and then help people um, learn the skills that I, would, that I would have liked to know, you know, that I currently don't have, but would like to learn. Uh-huh. Like building things? So building things is new to you? Yeah. Um, I have, you know, like, basic hand tool knowledge, you know, like I've, you know, changed the brakes on a car, I've done an origin, you know, I have basic stuff like that, but, you know, anything larger than that is completely, you know, new to me. What's but definitely that? always been interesting. Um, marketing. Oh, nice. You know, we can yeah. do some of that, right? I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you do copywriting? Um, not a, not a lot of copywriting. It's mostly email marketing. So it's, you know, very short, sweet, to the point. Um, you know, nothing really crazy. Do you work for a company or you work for yourself? Or how, what, what are you doing with uh, Company. I work for um, a casino here in uh, Las Vegas. Uh-huh. Uh, you have the time to, to make it on site full time for six months? Yeah. Yeah, this was definitely something that um, I'm con I've pretty much already considered, you know, um, a career change. So if this were something that was going to happen, yeah, I, I'd be there for the six months without a doubt. Okay, excellent. Um, tell me about some questions you might have. Do you have any questions of what this is going to be like? Or yeah, I, I was watching the other people's interviews, yeah. and I was like trying to. I was thinking about like what que what questions to write down, but I completely haven't done it yet. Um, so I'm going to try and remember what I was thinking about. Um, God, those are really good interviews too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was nice to see everyone else, um, what everyone else is interested in, and there are so many already different people. It's insane. Um, it's insane. Indeed. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it was like only like four people, and everyone's already so different. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was cool. Um, well, about the apprenticeship, do um, you know how many people are, do you guys have like a cap on how many people you guys are 24. accepting? Or is it 24. 24. We've got okay. eight or nine after the first two weeks. This is good. That's perfect. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Hmm. Yeah, 24. Um, God, uh, I had so do many do questions. Have, do you have candidates in mind? Uh, I could ask around. Um, okay. Yeah, definitely ask around and see. Um, God, I forgot all my questions. Um, let's see. 24 people. Oh, man, I, I'm drawing blanks here. Sorry. Mm. Um, well, I can tell you more more things like uh, about the program itself that that are important to us. Like how, uh, what's your uh, impression of collaborative product development? Okay, so here we're trying to change economic history by saying, "Wow, we can collaborate on important products so that we can get a lot of people interested in that we're gonna want to solve pressing world issues by what we do." Uh, what do you think is the potential 
of the idea of developing products openly while opening up to any so-called competition which doesn't exist it's we're treating everybody as a collaborator so we can make the best products i mean how how, how do those ideas resonate with you or do they they do and i think just the part of it being collaborative mm -hmm. and giving people that because you know we we're talking about companies who are mm -hmm. you know they shut down everything se secret yeah. you know no one's getting involved with that there i think it might be like a numbers game where if we're open and anyone and anyone can join, mm. why would they not? You know, it's, it's like, a, it's, it seems like a numbers game. Like we would bring all those people who want to build something or have, you know, any type of knowledge about whatever we're building. Why would they not come to us instead of the other people? That's um, kind of how I get it. To other people as into another company. Like say a, a person has a choice to go to John Deere and make some proprietary stuff that the users are not even able to tinker with or it's illegal to tinker with and stuff like that you're saying that we can offer a better proposition because hey if it's open that it can actually improve in a better way or how, how do you look at it yeah i think something like that where because like i think that's i read about that example where like at john deere you know people those tractors break down and people are thousands are even like is it like hundred thousand of dollars in debt because yeah. they can't work on those machines themselves and that's crazy because those machines are already so expensive so yeah i think i think that leaves a dirty taste in people's mouths anyways and if they have the option to do good where people can build their tractors themselves service them themselves and own them themselves without being yeah. you know thousands of dollars in debt yeah. you know who wouldn't want to do that <laughs> and that's, that's exactly yeah right. <laughs> who, who would, who would like choose that. rather yeah, yeah i the, think the math is like super simple but the thing that's that's blowing me away is that may, i mean maybe we hit it with apprenticeship or however we're doing it right now i feel like we're getting some really good people but it was very elusive to solve for how do we get people to show up to actually do this development and i i think we're we might succeed with the apprenticeship because and it's a combination of a lot of things we're far enough on a lot of the projects that like for example, with a house or the tractor, 3D printers, brick press, whatever. Um, the house is actually a thing that gives us the confidence because everybody wants a house, right? That yeah. will be like a guaranteed guaranteed success because if we can simply do it better and mo more efficiently than anyone else, which is, of course, if we're collaborating and putting enough effort into it, then who wouldn't want, you know, why wouldn't that succeed? Yeah, yeah, no, I I think the same I I remember seeing like a couple of years ago like the summer of design like versus the apprentices like why I couldn't do either it's just I think that this is more like the ability to like I think it's um, more involved like I feel like the summer it was like three months you're done you go home and like for some reason with the, apprentice, the apprenticeship it's like you're here you stay you work and you get what you need to be done so I remember looking like that I was like I would love to go to that but it's like you know I can't there's so much conflict going around it but now with the apprenticeship, it's like, that's all gone. So it's like, wow. I would love to be able to go now because it's, you know, it's there. Thanks for but. sharing that. That's the clarity I kind of thought about today. It's like, uh, my partner just asked me just now before we talked, like, what's, what's happening here? How come people are interested like this now? And I think it's because our offer is completely different. It's like, you're not gonna get entertained for three months and then go back home. It still is a worthwhile experience yeah. because you learn a lot of crazy stuff but now we're saying okay we're going to continue this is just the beginning and that's what i yeah. i always used to say this is only the beginning this is a true case of this is just the beginning and we're selecting a crew of people that like if they have the collaborative mindset like i'm hearing you express that and all the others so far in a really pl pleasant way and really positive way um yeah this is good yeah, yeah. no that was because like I know you said like that was like you know a great thing too and like i believe it this is all it, it, it all looks really great really great yeah 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 what so what do you think uh six months or december 22nd we've got or december 21st we have our graduation ceremony you picked up some skills what then what do you, um, think, what do you think you'd you would be an opportunity that you can uh see yourself doing well i heard everyone talk about um the city of Oklahoma. I think that's probably like probably like the biggest thing that I would probably want to do myself um, to start off. Um, but yeah, I think I because I've read the description on the website. And you said um, you stay there, you do yeah. you, like rent out the space, and you work there. And I imagine that's probably what I'd like to do. Or 
um, okay. what their on-site building homes are, um, okay. you know, whatever it may be, because I'm still a little blurry on what the options are once I'm there yeah. or afterwards, but I would like to continue building um, the yeah. CDCO home. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. So the idea is that we're not making any promises like exactly what the arrangement is going to be afterwards, except that mm -hmm. we know we're going to give you skills and training to do things, and we know that we want to collaborate on open product development at the end, and the idea is we are going to develop and we have developed you know the first prototype that's i live in a first cd go home the the second one is what we're building right now we're actually going to build two more uh prior to september and actually you guys are going to be involved in that we're we're going to go off site for a week and we're going to build this thing as a swarm uh, in me. rapid time and you'll see that whole experience of how how the collaborative work, uh, the kind of techniques that we use actually work in practice, because if you can compress the build time like that, that means economics are, look pretty good. You can, it means you can do it, you can get paid, and you can leave, and you have uh, a way to bootstrap. Uh, the idea was that the CDCO home can bootstrap our research and development, which is the, the general concept is spend half time working, and then half the time go complete into R&D on things that no one else would fund, because we're talking about pressing issues and solutions to pressing world issues kind of stuff that typically is hard to find hard to fund because everyone's pretty much going into the system and promulgating continuing the same system as opposed to creating novel novel solutions uh, now so so what would that mean uh, you can learn on a on a builder track which is like nominally i would say like i don't want to talk about numbers but i mean numbers the realistic number is we can pro like $25 per hour, that's like minimum we can do. That's just if you learn to build. But if you learn to manage, it's more. If you learn to go on the executive track more, which is more about now I'm going to organize these build events. So for example, you learn enough to run crews or to actually organize the whole event if you're, if you're kind of savvy on enterprise and, and motivated. Uh, but the least thing is you learn how to build it. The, the more is you manage people in building it and you can manage collaborative development events uh, where one option would be like what we do is we run the builds as education events too that's an opp opportunity but the big market is the num the thousands and thousands or hundreds of thousands of people that need an affordable home so yeah. that's that's the real thing um, ideally if <laughs> The ideal situation would be everyone in the program, and I, I know that probably can't happen because we got some really young guys too, like 17, one guy who's 17, yeah, and one guy. Uh, but um, ideally, we would all learn how to go at the enterprise kind of executive level. I mean, that's, that's some skills. You really got to up your skill set to do that. But at that point, if you're running, organizing those events, that could be with us on site here. You can... Uh, we can arrange for you to have your uh, your base here or you go back to your own community or whatever but we definitely want to collaborate and continue research and development so the product improves uh, but it's literally I like to say it's like what you learn will determine your revenue potential or earning potential so with that said what do you think you'd be in a position to learn just like just to build would you like to learn to manage people to design, to organize, to execute the whole events. It's kind of different levels. <laughs> I think I'm a very, <laughs> a very curious, curious person. I yeah. probably want to get my feet in like everything. Yeah. Um, like, is that part of like the enterprise track? You're, like you're talking about, like yeah. I seen that like that's at night. Yeah, I would like to do okay. everything. Like I'm there for all of it. So I'm going to take advantage of, you know, everything that I can get. And I think it's nice that you said you can stay there because I feel like, you know, definitely starting off after the sixth month, December 20th, I don't think I would have 100% confidence to take everything back yeah. here and start over. So I think it'd be nice to stay there for, you know, however long it is, get comfortable there, you know, kind of building up that confidence and having everything already there, ready to go. Yes. And then yes. that. So yeah. I feel like that would definitely be, yeah, okay. definitely be a way to do, you know, be a part, just being a part of every process and then eventually doing what you guys do, you know? Um, like yeah. the enterprise track, yeah. once I'm like, you know, officially comfortable in like everything else, then yeah. Yeah. Uh, when did you hear about OSC first? Um, and how did you like, hear about this, the apprenticeship? Even I first heard, of, no, uh, I, so I first heard about you guys around two years ago 
And I think that was like, you know, just searching like, you know, the whole like tiny house movement thing was huge. Yeah. And I came across you guys and seen like the Kickstarter and everything like that. Yeah. And then that was the issue where like I saw the Son of Extreme build and was like, I'd love to do that. But it was like, I can't do it. So like, it's something you always go back to. You're like, oh, I wonder how that's updating. And then I checked, you know, a week ago and then I saw the apprenticeship and I like read more about it. And I was like, that's good. That's perfect. And so that's when I, um, like I ran it over for the week. I was thinking about it, you know, uh-huh. and then um, after work today, I was like, I think I'm going to apply. And nice. that's what I did. And, and how did you see the apprenticeship announcement? Where, where was that? That was on the website. I seen that on the oh, website. So you take a look at the website here and there? Yeah. Yeah. Just to see, like, um, I was like checking up on all the, um, the I, don't, I forget the name for them, but um, basically like the, um, the progress on all the, um, like the pretty, yeah, all the machines. Yep. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. And I saw it. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Um, uh, question for you is, what do you think? I I always ask because it's all about us teaching each other, helping each other, and assuming that we've got the greatest potential to be collaborators to solve problems that we cannot solve ourselves, and that's how we're going to do it. Uh, what are the things that you think you can teach others in this program? Is there anything that you can offer? You said I know I can already. That's the easy one. Yeah, yeah. Marketing, um, and it's not like I have a formal education. You know, it's just something that I've I've worked with the company forever and kind of moved up and learned that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know I'll be able to. Once I learn something, I don't think I forget it. So um, I mean, I'm like a very curious person. I'm always asking questions. Um, never afraid to raise my hand. Very very curious about how everything works. So I don't think I have anything that I can bring that all be specific to what you're doing yeah. um but i'll be able to help just in hard work alone yeah yeah excellent excellent um yeah uh based on what i mentioned about the collaboration do any other questions come up for you or the work plan so there so there's the design training in the mornings and then the afternoons are where we actually build stuff uh, so lecture like pretty much eight to nine is i'm going to be spewing forth about design principles for just about everything we'll cover a lot of different areas you know like microcontrollers electronics mechanics like all this stuff what's a shaft what's a ball bearing and stuff like that and um, then saturdays are global collaboration days where we actually document like we if possible what i would like to do is try to get everybody like lift the whole world up by we make rapid learning videos for people to learn the kind of stuff that we're learning like say we learn something cool or, or just, you know, starting with FreeCAD, let's say, like, okay, making better videos on that or videos on how do you design a house or whatever. So it's, it's kind of like edge marketing too, because we're, we're teaching people while expanding people's possibilities and so forth. But, but basically also organizing incentive challenges and hackathons. So we'll be publishing uh, video, creating collaborative protocols, like how do we work together on a complex design by breaking it apart? How, how exactly do you do that? And how do you invite people from all over the world to do it? That's Saturdays, and Sunday is off. Now, um, there's the two days of enterprise training in the evenings in the first two months, but then the, the last three months, it's every day, Monday through Friday, because that's when the summer okay. X is. We're gonna hit that more. Uh, in the first two months, it's more about getting a solid philosophical grounding with every everyone, but also, I mean, starting on as soon as possible, get to the details of um, how do you make the, the CEQA home enterprise work developing enterprise models and we've got ideas on the numbers and how things look but a lot of different skills around enterprise training um the uh, fridays we actually do construction on site infrastructure builds like building more cabins building a workshop we're going to do an outdoor kitchen and bathroom with a biodigester and some uh, stuff like that so so innovative build techniques we'll be building the compressed earth block press which we will use then to build our next workshop because we're going to expand our facility. We have a 4,000 square foot workshop right now, but we're going to extend extend that to another 3,000 with a CEB structure uh, and things like that. So, you know, definitely full hands-on immersion. I don't know if any questions come up for you or anything. Or And I mentioned we're going to go off-site um, one or two times, possibly even three times to build the homes for other people as practice where we develop and streamline the techniques 
and get more video have like a dozen cameras running or even more and stuff like that capturing all the time lapses and build details and and effectively like getting the absolute complete digital model of the cdica home absolute complete exhaustive build procedures even the design guy actually the thing that i think differentiate our stuff from many other things is we teach people here's the design but no no how do you design this design and how do you make other designs because it's all about a construction set approach uh, we're saying uh, here's the building blocks like legos now build just about any configuration of a house so the rosebud model that we're building right now it's a two-story model but i mean you can have all kinds of different configurations pretty much thinking about 256 square foot squares and you can arrange them number of floors arrangement floor layout all of that uh, it's an infinite number of options that you have from there so it's it's that kind of a very constructive approach we call it a construction set approach got it yeah now i remember hearing you talking to someone else about how there's like the difference between the architect and like the yeah. actual like there's that disconnect yes. and it's like yeah. they don't know the architect doesn't know what's going on inside the house when it's being built and the builder doesn't know what's going on with the architect when they're you know building on paper yeah. so it's nice to you know that there's going to be like the full connect so you really know what's happening and what's going on and, and use, if you ever end up building one for yourself and that that's really solid feedback like that's a really precious feedback loop that needs to exist there too yeah because then without it no one knows what's really happening but um I was curious about what so is like everything going to be live streamed or are you because I know like I've seen like the videos on like Vimeo and YouTube so is this going to be like something completely new that you guys haven't done before where everything's being videoed everything's live streamed everything's documented documented it's going to be out there we're yes absolutely documented we are upping our game in video and live broadcasting because we just got a fat pipe here we got fiber just last year uh, nice. or almost two years ago now um, but that means we can do live streams and ha we also have a remote session. So anyone who's watching this, who wants to take the remote session, if we can't make it on site, we're definitely broadcasting the full design sessions and people remote can actually participate, uh, remotely. I mean, it's all about learning. How do you take a, you know, eventually all the stuff goes on the wiki and uh, into repositories of digital information. So anyone in the world in principle can can access it so at least for the design part you can have people from all over the world like like some of the participants even already they said oh yeah they've got friends that can be actually helping on the design working in FreeCAD so as long as you have the open tool chains anyone can access it and we can invite remote people to collaborate at the same time and we are uh, upping our game I mentioned in the description of summer X that we're gonna put like live broadcasting stations we'll have a bunch of cameras going into different streams that you can access at particular addresses on the internet even simple thing like Jitsi like right now we're on meet.jit.c slash open source ecology well we can have slash workshop location one you know a micro slash micro house build and you go into it you you go in there and there's people there you see the action and if possible we, we'd like to have people on site who are actually like managing the remote collaborators uh, yeah. So they're not, they're not just like watching in, but actually there's a mediator there. So we we'd like to see enough people. Anyone who's watching this, that's a role that's available. If you want to come to this and take that role, uh, or work out some kind of a work exchange arrangement where somebody does that, maybe for a reduced participation cost or something like that. Because uh, for a participant, that's going to be hard to uh, a participant is going to be built yeah. right. Um, so we need uh, more people. And hopefully we can round up as many people because we've got the bandwidth we can um right now we have a gig line we can get up to four four gig lines four one gig lines i mean that's that's enough to broadcast like i don't know a bunch of <laughs> everything <laughs> everything man. um and so we're gonna be, we're actually looking right now how do we um do online cloud picture re and video repositories because actually it so happens that june 1st google's free service for that shuts down no longer can you upload <laughs> up there so we're gonna have to figure that out Something but yeah else. we're we're definitely interested in upping our video broadcasting and remote participation game so that if somebody signs up they're i mean they're not going to get the hands-on skill but they can definitely get the design skill and watch watch the excitement from multiple locations yeah that sounds like a game changer that's yeah. gonna that just get so many more people involved yeah 
yeah that's, not- that, that's cool so yeah i mean we'll see we're always trying to push the limits of how we can involve more people and we know that like the remote collaborators they can be documenters they can be making videos at the same time that we're doing this stuff I mean, we've done it where when we built, for example, the iron worker machine, we had a dedicated team of a few people. So as soon as we were done with the actual build, we got a, both an instructional, like the complete instruction, which is typically you lose that. You never document that in the regular yeah. world. Like everyone builds their thing and it's like, forget about documentation. Uh, yep. Except here we did it. And then we also had a video because we uploaded the media like right up to the Internet. We had a video like the next day, too. So it was great. Yeah. Wow. So we everything was right it's like we got to do it and, and take advantage of that. But we, I mean, to push the limits of global collaboration. As I'm saying, there's such an opportunity for that, and I think we're at the cutting edge of some uh, some of that. Yeah. No, that's yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. That's really cool. Yep. Uh, trying to think of uh, my mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, there's so much information. I'm like, what else can I ask questions about? Yeah. Well, um, actually, let me. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you have any further questions. Oh no, please go ahead. Um, sorry, cancel this here. 